Hey, welcome to Splattered Podcast on SplatterTribe.com. This is the second episode. My name is Louie. We're going to get right into it with a brand new interview. I'm going to cut you there now. Stay tuned to after the interview because I got some announcements on some upcoming shows and I'd like as many people to show up as possible. So uh, here we go. All right, welcome to Splattered Podcast. This is the uh, this is the second episode, actually. Um, last episode, we had Bob Hacker from Metal Mafia, which actually ties in, in a way, to this interview here because the way we found out about Metal Mafia in this area was they came through with a band called Primer 55. Primer 55, actually, Bobby Burns is who I have on the phone. Me and this guy go way back farther than is any of your all's business. And uh, I got him on the phone. He's going to talk a little about a little bit about what's coming up with Primer Fifty Five, and maybe we're going to drop a little surprise as we're talking too. So, uh, anyway, what's going on, Bobby? What what is up in the Primer Fifty Five world right now? Hey, bud. Um, you know, I'm I'm fortunate enough to be home at this very moment, but it's uh, it's been uh, whenever we la- we talked last, I've basically been on tour, uh, solid. Uh, but um. You know, it's been uh, it's been a busy. Uh, you know, last year was real busy. This year's just proved to be even busier. Uh, we're getting ready to kick off a uh, a uh, full U.S. tour, hitting the West Coast and everything. Um, well, Wednesday kicks off in Chicago, actually. Okay, okay. And uh, so that's going to be uh, how the next four weeks are spent. Well, somebody that's been out there on the road for for many years. I mean, what is the road like in 2014 out there? I mean, uh... you know, it's hard. It's real hard. Uh, it's it's hard for bands to play music these days. It really is, I and mean, that's my thing. Um, you, I, you, I, I wouldn't start. Uh, you know, if I was a kid, like you know, like we used to be, really. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You know our dreams and everything, and you know how we used to play guitar and all that stuff. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for kids that have that dream today of going out and you know and touring and seeing the world and stuff like that. Because I just, it's turned into a digital. You don't really have to tour. I don't know what it's turned into. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, even to make to make a living off of it now, you do have to tour, and I think that hurts a lot too because there's so do. many. You definitely have to tour. I mean, it is a job. It's like any other job, and that's then that goes back into being a new band. It's like because if you're a new band, you can't tour because you'll be playing for free. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because it's just nobody, nobody will throw down their money on you anymore. And there's so much, and and like with it being that that the only way to make any money anymore is touring. Everybody's touring too, so I mean that hurts mm-hmm. as far as the consumer too, because they're having to pick a lot more often if they can see somebody play. And then you're dealing with, you know, you're still dealing with the people on the nine to fives just barely getting by. So it's hard to go to all these shows. So I, I can only That's imagine, true. and and nothing but respect for you guys that are out there doing it because you know you yeah. you you see it every day more than anybody else. I mean, Oh yeah, man. I mean, my drummer owns his uh, uh, like a tile business. You know what I mean? Like a one-man tile guy. Yeah. And uh, that guy will come off the road, like from you know doing a month-long tour. He'll get home. Say he, he lives in Jacksonville, Florida, but he'll get home four o'clock in the morning. He'll be up by five thirty, going to his job the very next day. This <laughs> this kid, you know, this guy, he's grower. He does not take any days off. You know. Yeah, that's. that's... But it, you know, it supports his habit. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. that's where that's where music has come to. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, uh, it's weird. It's, it's it's a weird it's a weird place today. It's a weird place today. Well, I feel like uh, you know the bands and the scene and time that I came or it was just dinosaurs now. You know what I mean? And it's <laughs> slowly dying, slowly dying out. And you know, uh, not only is the record industry dead, and. Uh, that you know, of course, that hurt all the bands and everything. Yeah. Uh, but the touring industry is now being killed by these but, guys as well. So. Well, now, like when you when Primer started, I mean, I guess the dream would have been to get signed, right? I mean, that's what you were thriving for, and you can't do that now. So, I mean, I, I, I never actively sought that out. You know, okay. we, we talked a little bit about that before, but I, I never, I never actively just like. In, in the back of my head when I was growing up, I was like, 
Crocodile one day. And, oh, yeah. You know, we all did, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and it's uh, for a minute, but once I started growing up a little bit, I, you know, I was pretty happy and content with my life riding my skateboard yeah. and living at my practice spot in Memphis, you know? Well, I mean, did you all, I mean, what was the dream for you all then? Well, I mean, was you just taking it day at a time when you were in Memphis? I mean, at the early days yeah, of primer? Pretty much, man. I mean, it was pretty desolate times, but I was like, it's a happy cat, you know what I mean? I was, I was living, you yeah. know? Yeah, I hear you. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I, you know, at the same time, I was I was making side money by playing on other people's records and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and uh, that was cool. I was got my, got my thing, you know, was playing some shows here and there, and you know, I just wanted to do something heavier and more exciting than what I was doing. But uh, you know, I started it, and actually, one of the people that I played, uh, but did studio stuff for. Uh, the drummer that this, that this person had brought in was uh, at a session that I was at doing the same session, and I brought he actually played on the first demo tape. Okay. So I brought it to him, and he left it there, and somebody picked it up, and that's how I got a record deal. Wow. Okay. He didn't. If he would have stuck it in his pocket, I wouldn't have got a record deal. Yeah. No. That, that's. A... You know what I mean? But he didn't stick it in his pocket, and he left it in the lobby, and somebody picked it up and next thing my pager number was on it <laughs> Back in the right. day. don't be aging this now <laughs> so uh, my pager starts blowing up i'm thinking business is good but it's not <laughs> but uh you know and then and that's how it happened for me i yeah i wish it was i wish it was some great story Hey man, I mean that is a story in itself. I mean that that's you know it, it's those little. It just takes a second for the life to change in somebody, and it just took a second for that dude to pick that tape up. You know what I mean? It it, it would have changed my life if he would have stuck it in his pocket. Yeah, and, definitely. And threw it in the garbage or on the shelf when he got home. What what was the scene like in Memphis at that time? There was those several bands that come out from that it's era. Pretty, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was uh, a, a very. Uh, it was very cutthroat, very cutthroat scene. Uh, it was more violent at the shows back then than uh, music, really. Was it really? Yeah. It was yeah. like uh, I don't know. It was like because every couple bands were in the same gangs and or whatever, you know. So the uh, the the scene was you split, and um, the fans were split for the most part, and. Uh, it was weird, and it only got more weird as more bands popped up. But uh, it was violent. It was, it was pretty violent. Yeah, a know? lot of people like There's to think lots that... of lots of band members fighting each other and bands fighting this band. Yeah, that's what's, a lot of people like to think that all the bands are, you know, comrades. But when you're down, that's down in the trenches. You know, that's. Oh uh, no. Yeah, it's it's it. You know. I mean, I was you know I helped the the saliva guys get their record deal, you know, and that's that's one and, of the bands uh, I was speaking of. It's know. only because they all used to live with me, you know, and, and Paul actually played drums for Primer back then and for a little bit, and uh, so you know, was, you know they were always cool dudes. So yeah, I was yeah. willing to help, you know. Well, I mean, now you fast forward what. You know, Primer Fifty Five. Now I know you got you got some new cats in the band with you. Uh, do you mm -hmm. want to talk about who you have with you? This is my longest. This is my longest, most solid lineup for probably the last couple of years. Actually, you know, it's taken me because, like I said, and this all goes down to music being so hard. You know, yeah. a lot of these kids will come out here and be like, "Oh my God, I can't do this. This is rough." Yeah, no, it's you know, the road, you, yeah. You know, they're thinking that some fantasy thing is not like, uh, you know, you have to work now, but... <laughs> can you, can but you yeah, see... So, you know, there'll be, there'll be kids that come out and do, you know, a tour, and he's like, I can't handle it. Can you uh, see the change? Our last tour, we had a... We have bass player itis because we just can't <laughs> keep one. But uh, my what? guitar player, my other guitar player, Joey, uh, Basilio, uh, he's been with me for a couple of years. Uh, our drummer, Grover Norton, uh, he used to been in a bunch of bands, so some really cool death metal bands, and uh, he actually played with Endo for a little bit, the band from back in the day. Okay. And, um, you know, so these cats, they, they get it, and they know, and it's just, it's just, it's, it's awesome. You know, I'm, I, I'm actually playing music with my, my buddies and my brothers. Um, Sam's a bass player, you know, which, which is usually just a revolving door. Um, 
but we'll see what this next tour. Maybe this guy will get it. But uh, you know, last tour we had this kid get up in the middle of the night and run away. Oh wow! <laughs> so he finished like <laughs> the two shows left of a whole tour, oh, and he wow. decides now to leave. He's, he'll regret um, that one forever, man. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so he finished this last couple of shows of that tour, the three pieces, no problem. Um, so but, you have know, you? It's, just, it's rough, kids. Okay, have you well, seen? Have you, you got to have your big boy on the row on to play music today. Could could you actually tell the day that that the whole attitude changed in them to where they were like, oh shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, he was a deer in the headlights. He'd never been on the road before. He was uh, a mama's boy, two or two. I mean, it's just pathetically. And I was like, oh wow, just uh, you know, uh, pick your clothes up. We all have to live here. <laughs> Uh, you, you might want to eat something healthy today, and you don't have to. I mean, you're a big boy and all, but no, I, but I uh, it was it was pretty crazy, and I haven't I haven't seen a cat like that in a long time. But uh, yeah, mom and dad does everything for this kid, and he uh, he put, he just needs to stay at home and and well. I wish it never happened to him because it's just ru- ruined his hopes and dreams. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> what he thinks is out there. <laughs> that's what it takes for people. I mean, it. I mean, you do. People get into it now. You know, you think that it's going to be a, you're going to be headlining these big shows and all this, and you get out there and you don't realize even a show's only an hour of the day. You know. Oh yeah, the rest of the time is you know set and wait, travel, set, wait, travel, set, wait, travel. And there's only so many people traveling on one of those uh, Will Smith buses out there, you know. <laughs> All right, man, dude, we roll in a van, and you know we're just about as hard as they come, you know. What I'm yeah, saying? that's, that's and that's normal. life, dude, and that's uh, you, we're happy doing it, you know. It's, uh, it's it's a lot cheaper than than spending all your money that you make for buses. Well, I mean, and I've done that too. Now, now these guys in Primer now are these guys that have been out on tour before, or is this another one? I mean, I mean, not just uh, with Grover, you. Grover comes from a, a very musical touring background. Um, actually, this is uh, in the other end of the spectrum is Joey Bag of Donut. Um, his first tour, his first real band he's ever been in. You know, it's like as far as records and stuff like that. Uh, but he's he's been my boy, one of my best friends in the entire world. Gotcha. And um, he gets it. I mean, it wasn't easy. It wasn't hard for this kid to learn nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He gets it and he runs the stage for us and makes sure all the gear works, et cetera, et cetera. Always on top of everything, you know. And, uh, you know, we all, that's between the three of us, we all have our own little certain jobs in the band and stuff like that. And, and uh, it would work. It's back to being a business now rather than just like, like I've always felt like it was like my solo band for years and years, you know, because I never trusted anybody to be on the next tour until I, I met these guys, you know. Yeah, I got you. Now you're probably like you're probably more hands on right now than you've probably ever been, right? I mean, I've always been totally controlling and hands on. Okay, all right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very much so. And, uh, I mean, cause, uh, you are you? Do you pretty much do all the? Who do you do you do the promoting yourself? Do you all do all that? Do you got people doing it for you? How, to get you guys both, on the road? Both. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we uh, book a lot of our shows, but you know, we have our buddies do it as well, help us out. But uh, if I can do something faster than you, then you pretty much lost, yeah. lost your job. You yeah, know? I get that. That's that's an. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just pretty simple, man. There's no no time to waste. No time to waste. Not here to hurt feelings, but if I can do your job better than you can do your job, you should probably find another job. But. Uh, that's that's every employer in the world, or every every place it seems that way. in it the seems world. Normal you know? to me, you know. And now, now knowing knowing your history a little bit, I also know like uh, basically up until I guess the your last run was SoFly, you had just that was when you had your your son. So yeah. since then, I mean, the the whole primer thing. What? How is it different now as opposed to your first fifteen years or however ten years in it? Or however yeah, long it uh, was. It absolutely you know? breaks my, and destroys my heart to walk out my door, and leave him. Uh, it's, you, it, it definitely changes your life. And my my my, uh, my drummer Grover, he just had his first child. Oh wow! All right. Um, 
He had it, and he was uh, he was on tour a month later. Actually, uh, this last tour we were on was actually Grover's first tour, being a father. And uh, I can help him now. You know, I learned the hard way uh, when I was playing a Soulfly. You know, they didn't understand anything about feelings or anybody else's feelings. So, yeah, I got uh, you. I could actually help Grover along as a person, you know. No, I understand. <laughs> and uh, and stuff like that. So I, I'm here for him, and I can tell him how it's going to feel and what he's going to feel and what he's feeling. But I still feel it every single time, and it uh, gets worse. You know, my son's four now, and uh, when you come home with notes that he's written you yeah, while yeah. you were gone, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get Missing you. you so much, and, it, and it's a really, really sucks you know yeah i mean now do you think that that maybe uh maybe that kind of was why you was you kind of got out of the soul fly thing i mean maybe the family thing oh well most definitely that was that was the the main the, the biggest reason yeah yeah other than the people in the band that was the, the first reason yeah i mean that's that's understandable it, it, once you have your kid you it, yeah. not but everybody you know, is with, with the soul fly thing it's like they um it was cool, and I appreciate the fact that I got to see crazy countries and travel the world and not make very much money uh, while they made it all. Um, but uh, it was an easy gig because they're really easy songs. And uh, I did, you know, I am a Subaltura fan. Yeah. But I'm not a fan of how they do their business. And once you become a, uh, once you have your own family, you, you everything, you, you know what you what you've ignored in the past. Once you're responsible for this little person, you, you start seeing a lot of stuff. You know. Yeah. No, I understand. So I start seeing a whole lot of stuff, and uh, you know, it, my 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 only rule was when my uh, my wife and son would come to Europe or whatever to visit me. Is just please don't smoke dope around my kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an infant. Yeah, you know. Gotcha. Uh, they chose to ignore me, and they put me in a guitar closet, a tuning room one day as my dressing room. Yeah. Uh, I don't know a football field away from the band, which was actually a saving grace because you know it was right beside. That's when I met Slash. Okay. And you know, Slash was playing Stop Playing Room. He's like, "Why are you in a dress? Why are you and your family in a guitar tuning room <laughs> when you guys are headlining Grass Pop Festival?" <laughs> yeah, oh, I hear you. You know what I mean? We're hundred thousand yeah. people. Like it's funny you mentioned that Slash. <laughs> so, uh, and I told him, and you know, he ends up, you know, picking Ryder up and playing with him, and just being a cool dad himself. Yeah, yeah. And everything, and it, it changed my life. This, this simple conversation that he had with me and my wife, and playing with my son, and just being a real dude, a real dad. Yeah. Um, really got me thinking about how I actually messed up. You know, I, I'm normal. I, I didn't think nothing of being moved uh, so people could do what they were doing with their friends or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, actually. Subconsciously, I didn't think about it until he actually was like, "Man, this is this is pretty crazy." Well, I, I can imagine the uh, the change there. I know you went from there, and then you uh, started killer in the workplace with Bones. Mm -hmm. And I know you probably left so fly and was like, you know, there's got to be a little fear and a little excitement both. And then that didn't pan out the way you wanted. So I mean, well, how did that affect you as uh, just your uh, your will as far as you know doing it? You know. No, I was just, I'm a shark, man. Got to go. Yeah. Got to go. Uh, you know, I was excited about the, the killing the workplace thing. Uh, I wasn't excited about Bones going to jail all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time. I wasn't excited about all the money it cost me to cost me to make the record, and uh, all the money that the tours that were booked cost me when he would decide to go to jail. Yeah, I can uh, imagine for stupid reasons. Yeah. It was so a, it was that a, lasted about as long as it did. Um, and he was just absolutely horrible to work with. Uh, just, uh, I don't, he was, uh, he was horrible to work with, and uh, absolutely not. Well, I mean, there's <laughs> no way. 
could be no reasons way. why he wasn't with Stuck Mojo anymore. I don't know. I don't know much. Of... Uh, it's it's, it's got to be. So, uh, yes. Yeah. I I understand you, Rich. Uh, Rich Ward. <laughs> I, I get where you're coming from now. Well, now you also you. I know you got a side thing. I don't know if it's a side thing or it's going to be a more predominant. You got the murder of the flesh. How how far are you in that right now? Murder of the flesh. I mean, that's that's basically the new thing, dude. It's uh, me, Joey, and Grover. We're all, in, but we're in Primer and we're in Murder of the Flesh. And Murder of the Flesh is basically where Primer would be today in the natural natural evolution of how I make records. Yeah. And it's uh, just all the way back to when I was a kid, you know what I mean? And Murder of the Flesh is nothing but a hardcore band. It was a hardcore band, hardcore music, not these intricate, thought-out <clears throat> songs or parts or anything like that. It's just getting in the pit and doing your stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's simple, easy, fun, and uh, it's a different um, it's a different thing. It's, this is a total 100% real-life band, Murder the Flesh is. I mean, it's, uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's our heart, you know, and we're definitely trying to get that out there, and uh, you know, subconsciously I'm trying to replace Primer with it uh, or teeter off... Uh, you know the, the the greater than and lesser than scale. You know. Yeah, I guess um, it's kind of veering another because, direction. Because uh, definitely, I will promote Murder of the Flesh, and you know we all will and stuff like that. But it, it, it's trying fifty five a star day job, I should say. Well, now if, on the tour right now, what can uh, everyone expect? Is there going to be some Murder of the Flesh also? Or are you sticking with just yeah. the primer? Oh, or of what? course, of course. Yeah, we're definitely we're definitely pumping the name Murder of the Flesh on the tour. Uh, we play, we've been averaging about, <clears throat> we'll probably somewhere along the way while we're playing, you know, the primer shows, play three, four maybe uh, Murder the Flesh songs to gotcha. introduce it to everybody and and uh, drop the website for them to check it out on their own and everything because, you know, a lot of the a lot of primer fans won't get it and uh, most primer fans will, you know, uh, <laughs> Gotcha. But the the the, the fans that are into the heavier songs like Ricochet and Pills and stuff like that will, will love Murder of the Flesh. I mean, that's basically what the band is. Understand or those type songs. Well, now as uh, that, of that style music, as um, of like today, I mean, will there be new Primer music, or are you just going to stick with Murder of the Flesh as far as nah, new music? I, you know, I, I can't really say I'll uh, I'll make another Primer record if if it, if it falls on my lap out of the sky. I don't have a problem doing it, but uh, I've always, I've never been in the type of person to sit and struggle with writing something that I've written a long time ago. No, I can't. And uh, people aren't accepting to change, you know what I mean? They don't like, you know, I went, I went from making the intro to Mayhem and then the new release. Yeah, there was a big, big change in those albums. Big change, yeah, that's the way Primer is, but a lot of people have forgotten that. Uh, but that's just the way I write records. I mean, that's the way I write music. I mean, I, I did it. I did the intro to Mayhem songs just throw on the record. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's cool. I'm not going to beat that like some of these old bands that are getting back together and stuff like that that went away since, what, 99 or something, and now yeah, they're back yeah. together for a reunion tour. Everybody. That are going to come out with the same exact sounding demo record as their first major label record. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I can't do that, man. I can't no, do right. that. Well, you got to do whatever. It's keeps like you working an am break or something. It's like <laughs> making breaks all day, making breaks all day, making breaks all day. But also, these am break people out there it would be awesome to come to a Primer Fifty Five show coming up. <laughs> I want to throw that out so we don't alienate know, actually, anybody. Before I moved away, I think that maybe the you know uh, right before I graduated, I got a job there. Yeah. Do a temporary service at Ambreak. Is that place still there up there? It's still here. He's speaking about a local factory in our hometown area is what he's speaking about. Yeah. Right there. It so is I still went here, in. Yes. This guy's like, come over here, kid. And, you know, I got, you know, hair, long hair and stuff like that. And he's like, gave me a big grinder, which I've never even seen in person before. <laughs> <clears throat> and he's like, grind these down and throw them in this bucket. And I'm like, uh, you guys are uh, like a uh, safety yeah. class or this? I was like, I go, okay, whatever. I'll grind them down with this big thing and shoot sparks everywhere. So I'm doing that, and I, and it, 
catches my glove. Thankfully, he gave me gloves. And it ripped the finger off my glove. And I was like, well, time out, done, later. <laughs> so that's, I, that's the one time I worked at Ambrick. I think that actually I might have been the one they replaced you with because I had that same experience, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> but I, I didn't last much longer myself, I'll tell you that. But... <laughs> That the the irony is that's probably true because it's probably the same temp service. <laughs> it is what it is. But I do want to say why I got Bobby on the phone also is August the thirty first we're working on something. I'm not gonna drop all the details now. You need to stay tuned to splattertribe dot com and stay tuned to anything dealing with Primer fifty five. But look for uh, August the thirty first, Primer fifty five in the uh, in the local area here. And uh are you still there, Bobby? I think I might have lost Bobby on that one. We were about done with the interview. I'll I'll go ahead and wrap it up. By getting back on here, we'll talk some more. Um, August 31st, look forward. There might be a show coming up. We uh, Let me cut this off real quick. I'll talk for a minute myself because we had a phone disconnection. But uh, I, I do want to talk. I, I, w- I would like to thank Bobby and Bobby Burns, Primer 55, Murder the Flesh. I would like to thank him for coming on the Splatter Podcast. Like I said, this is the second episode we uh, I'm going to have another episode here in two weeks. I don't. I'm not going to tell you who it is. It's going to be somebody. It's going to be interesting as well. Uh, I had a couple more questions for Bobby, but we were having some phone issues, so we just continue on here. I got a few announcements I do want to make. Um, on May 24th, I'm going to be playing myself doing some acoustic stuff up in Louisville at Wicks Pizza for Louis, the local guy. That'll be uh, May 24th. So if anybody's up there, come out. This will be my first show back in a while. I'd like some people out there. Um, Also, look forward to July 19th. We're going to have a show here in Radcliffe, Kentucky. It's, uh, let me get the information here real quick. I'm always a little behind on everything. I got a, it it will be, it's, it's going to be the midsummer meltdown. It's going to be a lost margaritas, which is where we've done a lot of shows at. If you followed the homegrown mayhems and you follow some different shows, that uh we're gonna have it there let me get the information here all right it's gonna be a blunt a burnt boy splatter tribe production midsummer meltdown and there'll be more info to come as i said that will be july 19th and then august 31st stay tuned we may have something coming up we'll see how it goes it's everything's still uh, up in the air but we're trying our best we're gonna maybe have primer 55 back in the area are you there man Hey, it's one uh, way in the interview. Yeah, so I, I actually did go ahead talking there. I knew that uh, I figured we had a bad connection. That, that's what happens. That was a good way to end it, but why I got you on here, we might as well end it right. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> he hung up. Yeah. <laughs> He's done talking. Yeah, you got well, hey, I, the fucking phone Hey, it's not the first time that shit's happened to me, all right? I do wanna yeah, right. <laughs> I do want to say right. August 31st. That's a good attitude. <laughs> August 31st, we're hoping to have Bobby here in this area. I'm not going to give all the details yet. you got to stay tuned to Primer's information, Primer 55. you got to stay tuned to SplatterTribe.com. I'm going to tell you August 31st, keep that date open. That's a Sunday night. It's been a couple years since Bobby's been down in this part of Kentucky. And uh, mm-hmm. when he gets here, we're going to do it right. So stay tuned for that and uh, look forward to it. I do got a couple more questions I got to ask you, man. One is the last question I like to ask everybody is to give me a question to ask the next person that I interview. Well, of course, the last interview was Bob Hacker at Metal Mafia, which he did give total props to you guys for taking them out because you were their first tour. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, he, he said uh, his question was, um, what would you, if you was backstage and you had to have something old, something new and something blue, what would you have? Old, you got to have something new, old, something, something new, and blue. something blue. I would have <clears throat> my dad's 1959 Jumbo Gibson acoustic guitar. Yeah, that's something awesome. old. I would have... Why didn't I ever see that? <laughs> huh? Why didn't I ever see that guitar? <laughs> I was always with my parents, bro. I don't know. Always maybe, there. Maybe I did. I that's know. what he that taught me my first chords on. Basically. Okay, okay. It's always in one of the rooms, you know? Yeah, yeah, I probably did. I just don't remember. Oh, I'm sure you did. You probably even played the thing before. I might have. I might have. Um, 
something oh something new would be my main axe um which is uh my EST uh eclipse so I've been playing for probably the past I don't know two years now it's new to me but uh um and something blue would hopefully not be Joey's hair <laughs> does that happen a lot he, he is he <laughs> is yes <laughs> he does but not so much I mean he's got railed so hard from us by showing up with pink hair one day and blue hair and stuff in the beginning that I think he's we've cut him, got him out of that. He's just lost all the fun in it now. <laughs> he's been hazed. I understand. Well, I'll tell you what, you got a, a question for me to ask the next person I interview. Could be anything. Okay. Um, what kind of tofu, what style of tofu would... Louis butt be if you grabbed it <laughs> firm or extra firm or soft well now what sucks about that is what i'm trying to do is i'm going to make the person answer their own question too but i don't know if i want to get that answer right now so we may uh we may <laughs> well, just that just gave you an interesting question maybe the next time i'll just substitute in somebody else's name <laughs> <laughs> I'm, i can do that with some just... crazy some crazy deep boys come on at a <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I do with this with this stuff in front of me. I'm sure I can do that. We'll we'll just we'll we'll, we'll say axe or something from the point. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I know I could do that. I could probably edit it in with his own voice, actually. So yeah, see, that's a great question, though, bro. You should leave that. <laughs> I'm sure. I I don't know. That one may be used already by somebody. Louis, Louis I don't bring a tofu butt. I don't know if that's a unique question or not. And I like to keep my questions unique. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, listen, tell everybody how they can find out more information about everything you got going on. Uh, well, you can go to our Facebook page if you're into the Primer thing at uh, facebook.com slash Primer55official uh, and ReverbNation.com slash Primer55. Uh, Murder of the Flesh, if you want to check out a couple of songs that we have up, uh, to, to, to get into the style of that band and, and find out some history about that, you can go to facebook.com slash mtffamily or you can go to reverbnation.com slash murderoftheflesh. And the tour starts this coming week, right? Uh, Wednesday, first show, Chicago, heading west after that. Are you going to be out for a little while? Going to be out for a long for a long time all right man well i tell you what i appreciate you doing the interview and as i told everybody stay tuned because there's going to be something special coming up on august 31st it's and coming for us. See all, the, all the kids from school man that's all what i'm saying you got a hometown guy coming back and he don't get to make it here very often so uh i mean right. uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do it up we're gonna do it up big so look forward to that as i said all the details all the information will be coming out soon just give us a little bit to iron out some details on some what's going on and it's a, it's going to be a it's going to be a hell of a show it's going to be a good time we had a hell of a time last time you was here we had a good That's turnout right. on a monday night the week of christmas i mean come on it was the worst possible night you could possibly have a show all oh, right it was awesome and it, it it turned out good everybody had a good time so oh uh, yeah so i appreciate it bobby i appreciate you uh doing this i will be in touch with you as as i'm sure you know and uh Hey, man, y'all have a good time getting out there Monday or Wednesday and uh, give it hell, man. Thank you, Louie. Anytime, brother. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. You got it. All right. All right. That was Bobby Burns of Primer 55. Me and that cat go way back. We've had, it's, it's, I don't even, like I said, it ain't nobody business how far back we've went back, but we've, we go way back. I actually remember a story about sitting in a classroom. This is when Bobby had longer hair and, we were sitting beside each other, and this dude behind us, I guess, was playing with his bubble gum or something, and he somehow it ended up in Bobby's hair, and I, I'll never forget watching Bobby chase that dude around the room, out of the classroom. It was a funny experience. It's just one of those high school experiences, you know, that are, that stick out. But before I get done today, as I said, you, you're listening to Louis right now. Louis Primal Bringers is what I go by sometimes. I want to announce three shows we got coming up. 
We got first off May twenty fourth. This is just next weekend. I'm going to be playing up at Wicks Pizza and Baxter Avenue. This is a Louis the local guy show. And while I got your attention, I want to stress that we're two different guys. This is Louis Bringers, and then you got Louis the local guy. We don't even look alike. Two different guys. But anyway, I'm going to play this first time. I'm going to play one of his shows. It should be a good time. I was going to do one of his a couple of weeks ago, but. Unfortunately, I had a little knee surgery I had to get taken care of, and so I had to pull out of that show. But So I'll be there the 24th. All right, on July 19th, we're going to have a show here in Radcliffe, Kentucky. It's going to be at Lost Margaritas. Anybody that's kept up with me knows where that's at. I played last year, me and uh, Aaron Fogel and a bunch of guys put on some shows called Homegrown Mayhem. This show here is going to be a Burnt Boy Splatter Tribe production. It's going to be called Midsummer Meltdown. That's going to be on July 19th at Lost Margaritas. You're going to get more info on that on SplatterTribe.com very soon. Also, I would like to say stay tuned. August 31st, there's going to be a lot of information about this coming out. We're going to have a good time. Primer 55 is coming back home to, or at least Bobby is, is his hometown. So uh, we'll see y'all there. I appreciate everybody listening to Splatter Podcast. As I said, my name's Louie. I'm out of here. I want to give a big shout out to Axe1073thepoint.com for all the help to get this Splatter Tribe Splattered Podcast going. Stay tuned. In two weeks, I'm going to have somebody brand new, and I ain't even going to tell you who it is till we get there. See y'all later. SplatterTribe.com. Peace. <laughs>